Our study of Parakuf Yudzayin of Tehillim, chapter 117, is dedicated to the memory of our dear cousin and friend, Sarah Lamdrach. When you take a look at Parakuf Yudzayin, the first thing that jumps out at you is really how short it is, because it's only two psukim, making it the shortest parak in all of Tehillim. Another thing that's unusual is the fact that the parak seems to be addressed to the non-Jews of the world, to the Gaim. And uh, hopefully we'll come back to the significance of that fact in a moment. Pesach Aleph begins, Halu as Hashem kol Gaim, praise Hashem, all peoples. Shabuchu kol ha'umim, give praise to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, all nations. Pesach Beis, ki gavar aleinu chazdo, because his kindness, the kindness of Hashem, has overcome us, the Jewish people. Ve'emes Hashem le'olam halaluka, and the truth of Hashem is eternal halaluka. Now, the question that almost all of the Mepharshim struggle with, and these two psukim, is how they fit together. It doesn't seem to flow so smoothly from Perak Alf to Pasuk Beis. Because after all, when we look at Pasuk Beis, which seems to be the reason, or the motivation, as to why the non-Jews should be praised, praised to Hashem, A, it's not a very compelling reason, and B, it's almost counterintuitive. The fact that the Jews have been the beneficiaries of Hashem's special favor throughout the generations, and the fact that they have always enjoyed the special kindness bestowed upon us by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's not a reason why the non-Jews would appreciate and give appreciation to Hashem, but rather, if anything, it's a reason why there would be resentment. So how does Pasuk Beis uh, provide an explanation as to why we're calling out to the non-Jews in Pasuk Aleph to give praise to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? So beyond the Mepharshim, this question was actually posed by the non-Jews themselves. The story goes that in the late 19th century, one of the chief ministers in the Russian parliament under the Tsar approached Rabbi Yitzhak Blazer, also known as Rabbi Itzla Petterberger, with this question. Rabbi Itzla was known as Rabbi Itzla Petterberger because he was the chief rabbi of St. Petersburg from 1861 and on, uh, which uh, he began at the tender age of 25. He spent most of his life in Europe, where he perpetuated the missions of his rebbe, Rabbi Yisrael Salanta, the founder of the Muslim movement, until he came to Eretz Yisrael, where he spent the last few years of his life. He passed away there in 1907. In order to understand Rabbi Itzla's answer, we have to take a, a moment uh, to look at a little bit uh, of background, which will provide a context for his response. In Parsha's Yisro, when Yisro meets up with Moshe Rabbeinu towards the beginning of the Parsha, we find the following Pasuk. Yisro says to Moshe, Atoyadati ki gadol Hashem mikol v'elokim. Now, following Yitzhak Mitzrayim, following Kriyas Yamsuf, I appreciate that Hashem truly is the greatest of all. Why? Ki vadavar asher zadu alehem. Because of, the, because of the fact that the Egyptians perpetrated so much bad, so much evil against the Jewish people. Now that reading is based on the interpretations of Rashi, and it would seem to be the Pashup Shad is telling us that when Yisro saw the retribution that was brought by HaKadosh Baruch Hu upon the Egyptians in response to all the oppression through the enslavement uh, that uh, they imposed upon the Jews, so he, he fully appreciated Hashem's greatness in the power to overcome the Egyptians. However, if you look at the Unklis on that Pasuk, instead of translating Asher Zadu as Hirshu, that which the, the Egyptians actually did wrong against the Jews, which again is Rashi's interpretation, Unklis uses the following term, Arepesgama di Chashivu. It wasn't that which they actually did, but rather that which they thought, they planned to do, they intended to do, even if they weren't necessarily successful in bringing those plans to fruition. The Briskarov in Pasha's Yisro explains as follows. The Gemara tells us in Kedushin that if a Jew intends to do an Avera, a sin, something wrong, but isn't successful in doing so, Hashem doesn't take him to task. Whereas if a non-Jew intends to do something wrong, even if that plan doesn't come to fruition, Hashem still holds the non-Jew responsible. Now the Gemara in Soto and Daf Yiraf tells us that the three primary advisors of Paro, uh, leading up to the enslavement, were Bilam, Eov, and Yisro. That means that Yisro had a unique um, vantage point in the sense that he was privy to all the evil that the Egyptians intended upon bringing uh, to the Jewish people through the enslavement, even that which wasn't ultimately successful. And therefore, when he saw the Makos and he saw all the punishments uh, that, the Jew, that the Egyptians suffered during Yitzhak Mitzrayim, he was able to see that those punishments were not simply a mida k'neged mida, measure for measure retribution for that which was actually done to hurt the Jews, but it was even mida k'neged mida for those things which the Egyptians only wanted or only planned to do 
uh, even if they weren't successful in doing so. So his unique perspective allowed him to appreciate that Hashem was giving retribution not just for that which was actually done, but that which, behind closed doors, the Egyptians also planned to do. And Hashem's greatness is expressed in his awareness of that and his decision to, uh, to provide punishment that was commensurate uh, to those plans as well. Coming back to our parak in Tehillim, Rabbi Itzla responded to the minister as follows. Heishev Rabbi Itzla zatzal l'osotzar, l'osotzar. We, the Jewish people, we can't really ever know the extent to which you are conspiring against us in Parliament. And beyond what you're successful in, in enacting uh, to our detriment, there's also lots of things that you plan to do and you want to do, and Hashem saves us before we even find out about them. And he nullifies your attempts, and he negates your attempts time after time. So we don't know about all that. Ulamatem, but you, yodim hinchem el hanachon, elu tzaris nechsachem eitanu. You know the full extent of the tzaris that we're saved from by Hashem's hashkacha pratis. Basher roam hinchem ki mizimoseichem lo yotus lefal. When you see that your attempts to hurt us and to oppress us are not, uh, don't come to fruition. Ve'edim atem l'chazlo shal kashbaruchu hagover aleinu. You are the best witnesses to the chesed of Hashem that, that overcomes us, that we enjoy, that we benefit from. And because this is so, Aleichem Lahodos, it is you, the non-Jews, who uh, it, it rests upon, it's incumbent upon, Lahodos Olhal, to give thanks and praise Baruch Hu, Yedchem, to Hashem, who has saved us from your hands. So in essence, what this parak is telling us is that the Goyim have to provide that, uh, that praise to HaKadosh Baruch Hu because they know best, even better than we know, the chesed that Hashem bestows upon us. Now, while this message from the simple reading of the Psukim is addressed to the non-Jews, there's obviously a great meaning that uh, Jewish people are meant to take from it, which, according to Rav Dessler and Mechtav Me Eliyahu Chelak Dalad Amud 65, um, uh, reminds us is actually uh, resting between the lines of the words of Shemona Esther that we say three times a day. The very first bracha concludes, Melech Ozer U Moshiach Magin. We refer to Hashem as the king who helps us, and Ozer, Moshiach, he saves us, Umagin, and he shields us. What's the significance of these three different terms? What does each one represent? So to, uh, to draw off of Rav Dessler's explanation, but to put it in somewhat contemporary terms, you'll find in the book Praying with Fire, on page 250, a, uh, uh, an elaboration of Rav Dessler's point, uh, which is exactly the point we've made uh, in this parak in Tehillim. First, Hashem is an ozer, a helper. At this level, a person is in the throes of an existing, immediate, and inescapable danger, and Hashem thwarts the harm or injury. What's the example? A man is accosted by a criminal who waves a gun in his direction and demands his wallet. Suddenly, a, p- a police officer on a routine patrol notices the crime in progress and rescues the victim. That's an ozer. Hashem has helped the person uh, through the moment of danger. Hashem is also a moshia, a savior. At this level, Hashem pushes aside an impending peril canceling the danger that is threatening the person. The illustration is as follows. A young man is innocently walking down the street when he suddenly notices a commotion in an alleyway as he passes by. The police are in process of arresting a pair of armed muggers who are lurking in the shadows awaiting the next victim. So here, before the person actually encounters the danger, Hashem is able to save him. Finally, Hashem is a mugging, a shield. At this level, he prevents the trouble or misfortune from even approaching the person in the first place. A pedestrian decides to take the longer, scenic route through the park to work. He'll never know that a gang of hoodlums had gathered along his usual route. I'll give one more illustration of this. Uh, Rabbi Kleinman, the author of uh, Praying with Fire, concludes as follows. Imagine a huge corporation whose workers are blissfully unaware that a major downsizing, downsizing is being considered as a means of improving the, com- the company's bottom line. The top executives huddle in a conference room sec- secretly de- deciding the fate of their employees. At the last moment, they decide to sell off one of their overseas divisions and spare the staff of their home office the dreaded axe. Here, a Jewish employee fervently prays for his livelihood in Baruch Aleinu, Shemona Esrei, on a daily basis, and yet he has no idea that Hashem responded to his heartfelt prayers by enabling him to keep the job. Again, the message for us is that no matter what misfortunes, troubles, obstacles we uh, encounter, our awareness and our kar satov towards the Kodesh Baruch has to also be imbued with the knowledge that there are other things which Hashem has spared us from, 
without our knowledge that those misfortunes were impending at all, or the fact that those dangers were even in our path whatsoever. And when we have that appreciation, we can have a better recognition of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Hashgach HaPratis on a daily basis, A, in saving us from those things which we directly encounter, and from those things that we never even find out about, but that Hashem has saved us from in His great chesed.